Good evening, you beautiful Glasgow audience. <laughs> Being such an attractive audience, I'm sure at various points in your career, you've participated in the search for love. You've been dating, you've understood the rules of the dating protest, you've used dating etiquette, and somewhere along the line, you may even have found your one true love. However, during that process, you may also have been on a few bad dates as well. And we'll come to that later. Now, my, my passion, as mentioned earlier, is the immune system. I'm absolutely fascinated how the immune system works. Your immune system is working really hard right as you sit at the moment. It's making millions of decisions that you're completely unaware of until it gets things wrong. So, in order to try and understand this, the comparison I'm going to use is love. So the partners in my story of the immune system search for love are dendritic cells on the left and T cells on the right. Now, the dendritic cells are the guys that sense your environment. They're looking at what's going on around you. They take that information, they process it, and then they transfer it across to these T cells on the right through some kind of interaction. Now, the T cells on the right, they're the master controllers of your immune system. They're the ones that decide what type of immune response you're going to generate and basically regulate that. So that interaction then, that search for love, is pretty important. It dictates what's going to happen next. There's not just one T cell in this relationship. Within your immune system, there are rather a lot of T cells. In fact, there are somewhere in the region of 20 million different T cells in your immune system. And you have to somehow get that dendritic cell to the right T cell very quickly. If you, for example, have an infection, you've got really about 24 hours for that dating game to take place. So it's a huge logistical challenge for our immune system in a similar way to dating is a huge logistical challenge for you. So trying to understand the rules of that game are pretty important. If you get the dating game right, and you switch on the immune system in the right situation, you could make a great vaccine. You could generate an immune response that would remove a bug. Or even if you have a cancerous cell in your body, you could remove that. If you, on the other hand, come across something that's innocuous in your environment, for example, like pollen or breakfast cereal or sandwiches at lunchtime, you want the immune system to switch off. And similarly, all of the other challenges in your body, your self-antigens within your tissues, such as your joints, you need to be able to recognize these as self, that they're not dangerous and not respond to them. So basically, your immune system is surviving 20 million bad dates in order to find the right match exactly the time it needs to, and that has to happen pretty quickly within 24 hours. So how does it do that? How does it organize itself to make that date? So. Normally, to look at a cell, we need to use a microscope. And in order to visualize cell interactions, what we would routinely do is take the cells from their normal environment and put them in a plastic dish and put them under a microscope. Now, this is an entirely artificial situation. You've introduced these two potential dates together in what is essentially a television studio. So if, for example, you took your rules of dating from watching Paddy Maguire or Cilla Black on Saturday night TV, you'd be pretty crippled, I guess, in the dating game. Now, your immune system has a complex structure. I don't want to go into too much detail, but in this picture on the right, the long stringy bits are kind of the roads, and the dots, the green dots, those are your lymph nodes. Now, your lymph nodes are just like our pubs and clubs and theaters and other places of social interaction. These are where your immune system gets it together. And so what we really want to do then is understand what's happening inside those green dots. And so we need to look at this in the, green, in the tissue itself. So in order to do that, we need a fancy microscope. It's not just a normal microscope. So this is our microscope in Glasgow. The fancy bits and the lasers at the back. Um, the lasers are, are made very close to us in Glasgow, up in Mary Hill. And these are a very fast pulsed laser. And their speciality is to put light deep into tissue. 
So once we've put that light deep, deep into tissue, we need to recover it, and that's the microscope bit over here, the kind of normal looking part of the, the setup, and it recovers that light, and then we can see what's happening. So what does that look like? Well, it looks pretty cool. So here's a lymph node, and inside here, all the red dots are your T cells, your T cells, and the area in blue is the connective tissue that holds your lymph node together. So using this type of approach, we can image at least a millimeter into that tissue and see what's happening inside it. And so really what we want to do then is have a look at the interactions. So here's another still image of interactions. So you can see in red now are the T cells, and in green are the dendritic cells. And they look as though they're talking to each other. But if we run it as a movie, because this is a live imaging system, you can see now that this is more like strip the willow or something like that. You have <laughs> very transient interactions between these two cells. So this is normal. We know in that situation there are absolutely no perfect matches between the green cells and the red cells, okay? So they come in, they skim across each other, they go away just like a dance. So what happens then when you change that? The other thing I should point out, this is happening inside your lymph nodes right now while I'm talking to you, so I don't know if that makes you feel giddy or not. It does to me sometimes. <laughs> So what happens if we change the system? So if we introduce a vaccine now and look at the type of interaction we can see, you can see now that these are multiple interactions going on. There are green T cells, green dendritic cells rather, and multiple T cells contacting them. So these relationships aren't always monogamous. And so this is great. So if you've given a vaccine, this is the type of thing you want to see. We can visualize this within 24 hours of the vaccine being administered. So it's a very rapid way of reading out what your immune system is doing. However, in, in life, is these good relationships, these good things are not really that interesting. You know, the kind of day-to-day, -day, you know, 25-year anniversary, I mean, pat on the back, very well done. But what we're really interested in, what makes the media, are bad relationships. They're always much more interesting. And so let's look at bad relationships then. So on the right, for example, if you see a pathogen, so the one that I'm going to look at is malaria, in that situation, the interaction tells the immune system to switch off. And so rather than in the case of maybe measles, where you would only get measles infection once in your lifetime, with malaria you get sequential infections because the immune system doesn't switch on. And so there you have a very serious infection that affects over 5 million children under 5 every day, uh, every year rather, um, where the immune system fails to work properly. And, and understanding those interactions then will lead you towards understanding how you make immunity to malaria better. On the other side is something that we've focused on more recently, and that's looking at the situation where the immune system recognizes self, recognizes you. And in arthritis, you see recognition of the joint tissue. So arthritis is a feared debilitating disease, affects about 1% of the UK population, it causes significant pain, inflammation, it also causes reduction in life expectancy in people. And in this situation, that response is driven by the fact that your immune system has made a wrong decision at some point. So what can we do then? How can we get it right from the bad situation. So on the left is another movie. This time we have T cells and dendritic cells talking to each other, and I've highlighted their interactions in gray. So they're forming these long-term interactions that I saw before. And in this situation, this would be associated with development of, a, of arthritis. So what we do on the right now, so six hours later after this movie was taken, we administered a drug and we call this drug a cluster buster because we hypothesized it was going to have an impact here. There you go. So it did what I said it would do. It busted the clusters. It stopped the cells interacting with each other and allowed them to go back to a freely moving situation. Interactions did not occur. Why is this important? So, well, first off, we can look at this and it's diagnostic. It tells us there are bad interactions occurring in that tissue at that time. So we can say for somebody who is not developing any signs of a disease at the moment that they will potentially move on and develop an autoimmune disease. Perhaps more interestingly, it means that we can test drugs that will break up these interactions. 
and allow us then to allow the immune system to go back to a normal situation and not recognize self anymore. And then finally, because we're trying to treat a disease that isn't present at all in, in an individual, they have no symptoms showing at this point, it's a readout then to show that that drug works. That drug has truly reset your immune system and is being effective. So, to conclude, we have a lot of implications here. However, in dating, there are some relationships that we, we, may, we may never, ever understand fully. However, within the immune system, those relationships between T cells and dendritic cells, we're trying to understand more and use these to therapeutic benefit. Thank you very much.